For now, there's little uh, sensors, I think I have one in my pocket, like this one you can put in your underwear. This is a company called Spire, mm -hmm. and you get a pack of 10 of these, and you just put them in every pair of underwear, or 10 pairs of underwear, and you put it on, and it automatically starts tracking your steps, your heart rate, uh, your respiratory state. Mm -hmm. And um, what's interesting, these start as sort of consumer devices, um, but now in the United States, uh, with how we pay for medicine and healthcare, now these companies can start to get paid for remote monitoring of patients who might have a pulmonary, a, car a heart or cardiac yeah. issue. So they can be start to be used for monitoring and being paid for in new ways. So we can put sensors everywhere. And now again, you don't need to wear anything. Um, cameras on your phone can pick up your heart rate or your blood pressure. And heart rate variability also. Right now, maybe mostly heart rate and blood pressure. I'm not sure if the camera yet can do heart rate variability. It can, it can. I, I already tracked. There you go. So, um, so, or uh, voice can be a biomarker. Yeah. Or Wi-Fi. Uh, engineers at MIT, Dina Katabi and others have now re-engineered Wi-Fi to pick up the vital signs of many people, even in the same room, and track your sleep and other behaviors. So we're entering a, a time where we can track our digital exhaust, the digitome, mm -hmm. and combine that with your genome and microbiome and metabolome and all those elements which will give us a, a better picture of your he health and wellness or transition to disease, or better ways to manage uh, a medical problem. I run a program called Exponential Medicine, where we think about what is the potential of technology to improve health and medicine and health span, and maybe lifespan, uh, around the world, and to bring health and medicine to more people, and, and using technology to do that. Um, and you know, the most basic technology, not even basic anymore, is you know the the magical smartphone mm -hmm. is becoming a healthcare technology that is embedded almost in all of us. I and mean, if we're talking about transhumanism, we're already attached to our our smartphones to augment our our brains or to, we're see, already cyber. to see you on YouTube, you yeah. know, or to have the knowledge of the entire world. So, and this is an antique. Uh, you're yeah, too young for this. iPhone. This is an iPhone two. iPhone two. It still works. Here's my daughter Alexandra when she was earlier uh, younger. It still works. Ten years old. Wow. It still works. 10 years ago, this was amazing. Now if you use it, you could try it and be like slow, as a low resolution camera. It feels like, ugh, I would never want to use that. And then my iPhone 11 feels magical and soon that will feel antique 10 years from now. It might be embedded in my contact lens or in my hearing device. So in a sense, these are becoming gadgets we carry that are becoming healthcare devices. Um, you can use this to track your heart rate from the camera. Um, you can use the camera to help you do laboratory analysis. I'm on the board of a company called Healthy.io, where you can dip your, your analysis, take a picture, does the diagnostics, or can look at your skin lesions with artificial intelligence, or analyze your voice or your movement. So these are gadgets we're already carrying, and now there's 10,000 different apps that can help you with some element of health, from doing yoga and meditation, to tracking your medication, to helping you with your ketogenic diet, to uh, uh, to many other elements. And so now we have other technologies like, like you know, this one that can track all your vital signs in your underwear, under wearables. Or there's new companies that are building into your textiles, one called Mayant, has a new technology called Skin, S-K-I-I-N, that can enable you in your shirt or your underwear to track your vital signs. Um, or little sensors like this. This is um, a company from Israel called Upright, and it, uh, you put it on your back, helps your posture which my isn't often good. So it helps you, buzzes your back and gives you a little nudge. Wow, I would need that. <laughs> so yeah, me too. So the idea is uh, not just a wearable, but a trainable. It gives you some feedback, right? Uh, it gives you a little buzz if you're hunched over, right? So, and, want, and it's connected to your smartphone also, right? Right, it can be independent, but also can sync and give you- You can uh, analyze the data. And give you a dash, how long are you standing uh -huh. up straight? And just giving you a little bit of feedback every, you know, if you're hunched over, can retrain your physiology to give you better posture. And maybe that will prevent you when you're 70 from having back pain, right? And uh, a lot of people have spine issues as, issue as well. So that's another gadget in my pocket that you can buy now for less than 100 US dollars. That might be, be helpful. Um, other things, and, and, and I have the old one. I mean, it started like this, it shrinks to this, soon it will be even smaller, maybe disappear. As, as usual, all the links to all the resources and gadgets mentioned uh, in our show is in the description in the video. Well, I think that, I mean, it's easy to make these gadgets. 
you know. But what gets interesting is we start to connect the dots in the data. I have an article in in the 2019 National Geographic. The whole National Geographic's on the future of medicine, January 2019, and the the article I wrote was about the future of medicine. And National Geographic started to rename the title, you know, 12 innovations that will change the future of healthcare. And sort of my point is, it's not about any one piece of technology. There's no magic bullet. It's how you put these things together, gene, gene editing and sequencing, wearables, uh, big data, AI, new forms of drug therapies and devices that will help us live longer, healthier lives. Um, so it's e too easy to make them just gadgets. Um, like, you know, this is a pretty amazing device called the Echo. It's a stethoscope. It's a digital stethoscope called the Echo, E-K-O, um, built by some students at Berkeley originally. And so it can it's let like you do... It's like the stuff that uh, doctors wear? Yeah, it's, just, it's a digital stethoscope. Mm -hmm. You can sync to your phone. You can actually plug in a headset and listen as well. Um, it also has artificial intelligence to enable you to analyze the heart sounds. It even has an EKG built in. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, do the EKG and the... Uh, stethoscope. So this could be useful to make you uh, as good as most cardiologists at listening to heart sounds. So this could be used for screening or if you are in a clinic here in Moscow or in rural, rural Africa, an ability to do uh, better diagnostics. There's now even a, a low-cost ultrasound device embedded with ultrasound with, with artificial intelligence uh, from a company called um, Butterfly. So the idea that you can have diagnostics in your pocket, whether it's through your phone or through a device like this is going to change health and medicine, meaning you can start to do healthcare uh, almost anywhere and blend that with telemedicine and uh, doctor chatbots, um, other, other gadgets. Um, this is an early prototype of the idea of a medical tricorder. So some of you might remember Star Trek, Yeah. right? Uh, there's the tricorder you want. Um, I helped design an XPRIZE. Uh, an XPRIZE is a, a competition to make a medical tricorder. And this is one of the teams that built a version of this. So the idea is that soon we'll have technologies in our pockets that can analyze our, heart data, our, health, our health data in an integrated way. Heart rate data, heart rate variability, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, maybe blood sugar. Um, and then start to synthesize that and use that to pick up a problem early or to manage a disease. So uh, right now, what does it do? Um, this one was a... If I charged it up and synced it, it would track uh, heart rate, oxygen saturation, uh, calculate your blood pressure, um, uh, give you an EKG, a basic EKG, and integrate that with an AI agent on your phone. So all within uh, like uh, several seconds? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is a prototype version. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing other companies build versions of these uh, that will give you, uh, I have another one in my bag, integrated sort of medical data immediately that will hopefully get better and better as we quantify more people and start to understand what does this data mean you know, outside of the usual clinic. Because probably even you and most people growing up, when they get sick or have a medical issue, they usually go to the doctor or mm -hmm. to the clinic or the hospital. And that's the only time they collect any medical data. So we have very intermittent data. And so that leads to a very reactive sick care system, meaning you wait for the problem to happen rather than stop it. So the future of health and health and medicine, hopefully, is to use these sorts of technologies. Some of them are quantified self, some of them are omics, to be much more proactive and preventative, um, and then to optimize your health over the long term and find problems at stage zero uh, before they become a real issue that can maybe even kill you. Wow, that has been an impressive set of gadgets. I have more, I think, but uh, ah, do show us. Oh, let's see. Uh, other versions, this is just a, a prototype of a sort of a lab on a chip. So let's say it's, it's winter time, you have a cough, maybe you have the flu, maybe you have a bacterial illness, pneumonia, uh, maybe you don't want to get your friends and family sick, you'll just spit into the element here, the lines will show up, you take a picture with your smartphone, and it does the analysis of what kind of respiratory issue do you have, what, maybe what kind of virus, maybe what kind of bacteria, and then you can treat that uh, more readily or do... Uh, How long does it take? I think it's like three three minutes, you know, just wow. like, almost like a pregnancy dip. dip uh, because I think pregnancy. if you do that uh, in a hospital, it takes like a couple of days to analyze. Uh, right. We're seeing a whole explosion of new ways to do, you know, a lab on a chip. Here's another example of a, 
a technology where you'll uh, you know plug it into your smartphone, and it'll be this is on the market already, and you could uh, do a blood test. Maybe you know blood sugar is an easy one, but it might check your cholesterol or your hemoglobin A one C, which gives you an indication of maybe diabetes, or uh, test a whole number of other factors. So this how is, does it work? Uh, it's basically using simple microfluidics or chromatography. This version, uh, and there can be a variety of different tests. So, for you know, ten rubles, one dollar, mm-hmm. you can do a test that used to require you to go to the laboratory for a hundred times that. So the ability to do, that, do uh, diagnostics. And how anyway. do you do? You pierce your for some finger? it might be saliva, it might be blood. Most people don't want to do blood every day. So there's even a technology. This is a new one. Um, Uh, that can uh, uh, put this on your arm and draw a little bit of blood and then connect it to your laboratory or you put this in the mail. So you don't need to have a, uh, a nurse or a doctor pull your blood, you can do it easily at home. So mm-hmm. this, this will take, uh, I think, 100 microliters of blood, a small amount, but enough now to do almost any test. Uh, is it painful? No, this one has a little tiny micro needle. Mm-hmm. You put it on your arm for like two minutes, press the button, Take it off, and you can drop this in the lab, or maybe connect it to your phone. And for many folks who are interested in health and longevity, they can start to quantify not just their vital signs and their steps, but their daily laboratories, if, if that's relevant, right? Like many diabetic patients, they can track their blood sugar 24/7 with a, a wearable blood sugar monitor. Many folks are doing that anyway, even if they don't have diabetes, to understand their their blood sugar data. Uh, many folks will be able to do this sort of thing at home for many other forms. Your your hormones, your testosterone, your cortisol levels, your uh, uh, you know many other measures that might be useful to understanding your physiology, your aging, and to maybe stop and maybe even reverse that. Wow, so many gadgets! I, 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 uh, I, I, and I more. Well, last yeah, one. yeah. So we talk about quantified self. Now you can think about you know quantifying your breath. The molecules mm-hmm. in your breath have lots of data. So you may have heard about um, some dogs that can smell cancer. Right. So now folks are building nano noses. Analyzing the molecules from your breath can give you an indication of, you know, you're going on a date. Is your breath good? <laughs> you can quantify that. Uh, um, soon this might measure metabolic dis- diseases, like you could pick up diabetes from your breath, ketones. There are other um, companies making versions of this. If you're trying to go on a ketogenic diet, You can look at your metabolism from your breath, or maybe pick up and screen for cancers uh, just using your breath as well. There's a company called Alstone Biomedical out of uh, United Kingdom that is one of the leaders in sort of breath biopsy, right? And so I think the future will be we'll start to you know you don't need to go crazy. Your 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 environment, your wearable devices, your phone, your cameras can start to measure your basic physiology, your basic vital signs, your day to day elements start to see, hey, Greg, we noticed hmm, your walking has changed or your posture is worse or your heart rate data is showing you're very stressed or there's signs that your blood sugars are rising at an unhealthy way and maybe give you a little text saying, hey, maybe you need to go get checked out with another test or maybe come to a clinic, maybe get a scan. Maybe that finds that brain tumor or other problem very, very early so that you can treat it when it's very treatable as opposed to giving you a chronic or maybe even a, uh, a lethal problem. Um, so uh, you know, that's where part of healthcare is going, sort of always monitoring you in smart ways, giving you early warning, uh, integrating that data hopefully into the international world of, of big information so that when I see you as my patient, I don't just have the knowledge in my head, I have the sort of AI integrated synthesized information from thousands of doctors and studies, you know, right at my fingertips that are available for me right away. <laughs>